have Sydney Scotia is going to be on the show. She's multi-talented, which I love because it means that we could, it's an array of stuff that we can just talk about. Very excited. We're going to hear more about her shortly. So please, let's listen to some nice jazz, and then we'll come back and get the show started. And we're back. All right. So thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. We appreciate it and appreciate all of y'all. Uh, George, I know you have some uh, announcements and some uh, people that we want to give some love to and appreciate. So go for it. Thank you, Mr. Soto. Yes. So the Counterpart Show is brought to you by Wellness Resources, a family owned and operated nutritional supplement company providing the highest quality clinically formulated supplements since 1985. Find out why Wellness Resources supplements are the top choice of health conscious individuals around the world. Go to myvitaminresource.com. And don't forget that when you enter the promo code counterparts, you will get free shipping on all orders. Check it out. Cool. Right. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about our guest today. It's very, very exciting. We have Sydney Scotia with us and Sydney has recently wrapped a series lead role in the Crave series Pillow Talk. She is best known for her role as Geneva in the Netflix comedy Some Assembly Required, for which she won two Joey Awards and earned a Leo Award nomination for Best Comedic Actress during its three-season run. Sydney then went on to star in a Netflix series reboot, The Guardian Code, based on the cult classic cartoon. Other credits include CW's My Crazy Ex-Girlfriend and Hallmark's Eat, Drink, and Be Married. Uh, along with acting and music, Sydney also pursues a career behind the camera with her feature-length documentary, This Hits Home, winning audience choice at the Boston Film Festival. This year, she makes her theatrical debut in Frank and Penelope, released in theaters on June 3rd. And season two of Pillow Talk is to begin filming in September 2022 and we are absolutely honored to have her on the program so without further ado ladies and gentlemen sydney scotia Ooh, all right. hi everybody hi all guys right. thanks for awesome. having me yes absolutely. this is our pleasure thank you so much so that's a lot <laughs> thank you <laughs> for the it, lovely introduction absolutely absolutely um george has uh, been practicing reading for a while yeah, and, finally uh, learned how to read. <laughs> finally, we I got him to to I gave him that role. Um, but one of the things that that always fascinates me about artists are multi talented artists that because I, I I love music, I love writing, I I, I love directing, um, acting. I'm, I've been in front of the camera a lot, and yet you'll get some people that are be like, uh, you know, you should probably just pick one thing and kind of focus on that. And, you know, that's how they, they sound in my head anyway. Um, <laughs> so is that something that you run into? Like, the, is it, you know, do you kind of have that same, uh, you know, not, not that it, that it's even, it's never stopped me, but you do get that sometimes where people kind of figure, you know, they're trying to put you into a little, uh, a, a little thing. I don't even know what it's called anymore. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's it's funny because sometimes I'll try to do that to myself even. Mm, and I'll say, maybe I should just focus because I do tend to put a lot on my plate at any given time. If I'm not overwhelmed, I feel like I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm like, I need to right. be doing more. I need more on my plate. But then I sometimes look at myself and go, maybe, maybe I should. But I, I don't have a, a ton of people telling me that, thankfully, but I totally get where that comes from. Um, and I have occasionally heard people say like, okay, if you want to act, you just got to act. That's it. Right. Eat, sleep, and breathe acting. Or if you want to do music, you need to eat, sleep, and breathe. I think there is some truth to that, but then also to be a multifaceted artist is kind of what you need to do these days in right. order to stay competitive maybe. Right. And also yeah. just if it's what you like to do. Maybe. I think it all comes down to the person. If it's what you like to do and you want to be doing a lot, then that's great. If you want to just do the one thing and eat, sleep, and breathe that, that's also great. It's, it's yeah. your life. 
Yeah, and it definitely uh, comes down to the individual. But what's interesting is that back in the, uh, we're, not, we're not that old, but back in the 40s, when studios would assign someone, they had to know how to dance. They had yeah. to know how to sing. They know how to know. They had to know how to act. You know, it, it, it was a requirement. You couldn't go to Hollywood if you didn't know how to do one of those things. It's so true. And when I first moved to LA, uh, as a young actress, a lot of my auditions would be for multicam sitcoms or for Disney Channel or Nickelodeon. And I had workshops where teachers would tell me, okay, if you need, if you go into an audition, the casting director may say, okay, now do a little dance for me or do do a song for me. And so, I mean, all my shyness as a kid had to go out the window because if they're, if they're like, do a little song for me, I'm like, okay, what am I gonna sing? <laughs> uh, which is stressful. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you you needed to have that those skills or yeah. at least pretend to. Yeah, and I think it also opens you up for more opportunities for like if you're an actor, but you a singer, I mean, that, that's also very melodic, you know, dialogue is very melodic there's a lot of rhythm in in the scene you know i think it kind yeah. of all plays together i think it's actually a really a really good thing so george is actually the official question person I, i'm usually not i i kind of just go with the flow but george likes to write things down um I'm so i'm gonna ask, i'm gonna me. i'm gonna ask, ask him to <laughs> ask something Go ahead, well, George. first of all, just to, <laughs> to kind of piggyback on what you guys were saying. So, you know, as artists and John and I have talked about this a lot as artists, we have to be constantly creating. Right. It's just mm -hmm. it's just the nature of who we are. If I'm not creating something, I'm I feel like I'm dying. Right. I got even this show Oxygen. was was kind of born out of that thing. So I completely understand that whole concept of, you know, you know, whether it's sing, you know, singing, dancing, film and all that, just creating and, and, and having that vibe, which is great. Now, you when you were younger, I know that you started dancing, right? You started dancing when you were younger. Mm -hmm. And um, how did because uh, I, 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 I think I heard that that was your first love, right? Yes. Yeah. OK, now, how did how did the acting part come into that? Well, OK, yeah, so I started as a competitive dancer. Well, I actually started in gymnastics. Oh, okay. And okay. decided that, that wasn't for me at five years old and continued tumbling and continued working on some gymnastics tricks. But I saw a dance studio and and right across from my gymnastics uh, gymnasium and said, I want to do that. I saw these girls dancing and they were performing, giving it their all. And they were called the plum dolls. And so I was like, I don't need to be a plum doll. That was <laughs> my life's mission from that moment on. And so I just fell in love with performing and being on stage through doing that. And then at the studio, there was an acting class once a week oh, okay. and my brother would take that acting class. And oh. so a couple times I sat in and watched them and just had the best time. They would usually do comedy scenes. And so I would just think that was amazing. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And I would never go up and do one, but I would watch my brother do it and watch all the older kids. I think you had to be a certain age to do it. And so eventually, I said, okay, I want to do it. I want to start taking acting classes. And then from there, there was an opportunity in within the studio to audition for a local musician. When I was in Arizona at the time, mm -hmm. was doing a music video and they needed a little girl to cry over a Barbie doll. And so I booked the role. I was apparently the best at crying over a Barbie doll. <laughs> and I, oh, no. I yeah. went on set and waited in the desert for hours, a whole I over this Barbie doll and absolutely loved it. I just, I just knew that okay, this is a career. This is definitely what I want to do. And from there, just kept training and kept going through school. And then when I was fourteen, I, my mom and I moved out to LA and started pursuing it professionally. Wow, wow. that's so awesome. You know, funny enough, uh, George's first band was Plum Dolls. I think you were in there. <laughs> Weren't oh you? my god i for a second i almost believed you and i wanted to believe you so bad you know when you grow up with this guy him and i are cousins okay <laughs> so we grew up together so this is a whole life of this okay <laughs> so it's, trust me right. I that would have, have been play. amazing. That would have been incredible, right? It would have been yeah. incredible. Yeah. I would have just kept it going, George. Just, just <laughs> don't, don't lie. Just be like, yeah, I remember that. Those were, uh, I hated those tights. Um, but let me, uh, I want to ask you about, because dance is, um, there is acting in dance, because you, you're telling a story with dance. You know, right. there is, an uh, you're interpreting uh, whatever the piece is. Yeah. Uh, and that has to communicate. So 
it makes sense that it kind of goes into that into that uh, direction. Do you remember the first time you said, "I want to get in front of people and I want to actually do this uh, without dance"? You mean on, like in an on-set capacity or performing in theater? Yeah. Yeah, I I uh, had the chance one summer. My mom gave me the option. Okay, you can go to dance nationals, which was the biggest competition of the year, where all the dancers from all over the country and Canada would come to one city, usually New York or LA, and we would compete against everybody. And I had the choice to do that, or to go to a two week acting camp in LA at Occidental College. And so I chose the acting camp. And wow. we got to do intensive training every day, uh, do scenes. And I remember loving it. It was a sleepaway camp too, I was 13, and just had the best time. Yeah. And so getting up and performing in front of everybody, and then there was a filmmaking portion of the camp, an acting portion, a dance portion, oh. and something else. But we got to act in the short films that the filmmaking class was making. So oh, that was yeah. the first time I got a chance to be on set yeah officially and so that's when i really realized okay i can do this i want to do this and this is a viable career option so and i want to be on set with a bunch of people and just working 15 hour days for the rest of my life yeah. um so <laughs> that that was kind of it and then yeah. from there someone at the camp said if you want to do this you have to be in la at the time, there were no okay. self tapes, not really. Mm -hmm, right. So I, that's when I packed up. But that was kind of the moment that choice between nationals and acting. It really was a good test for me to see where does my heart really lie. Right, and it, it's a great age too because that's kind of like where I did a a, a, a workshop in Jersey for uh, two weeks. I taught this class, and the kids were about 11, 12, 13. And really, when you get them in a classroom, there were about 22 kids. And when you get them in a classroom, you really, or, or in a setting, you know, not a class, mm -hmm. uh, but in a setting, you really get to see who wants, who's going to be the, the director at some point, who's kind of like this leader, who's the leading man, who's the leading lady, who's uh, supporting. And you don't have to tell them because you never want to actually, uh, you know, uh, tell anyone what they're, what they're going to be. But you see that develop through them at that age, uh, you know, and it's really a, a wonderful thing that, that you were able to do that and mm -hmm. really find, find your voice within that. Did you find, um, did you find it difficult to make that, that move? Cause I mean, moving to LA to me just seems like I'm, I'm from New York originally. I lived in yeah. Jersey and I'm in Nashville now, but moving to LA, just, I've been to LA. It seems like, whoa. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's crazy right it's crazy right yeah. like, are, you both in, are you both in nashville no I, i'm in new york I, I stayed in new york he's the okay. crazy one that moved to nashville yeah okay yeah um and i mean i've been to la and it, it just seemed like in new york there was a vibe where if you were a celebrity in new york walking on like you know i walk down the street i'd see al pacino and you know woody allen just walking around new york and nobody would have even really approach them but in la it felt like if that same thing happened somebody would be out with a script and yeah can I get a can i get a meeting can i get you know yeah. anybody, it's, a, it's a little is it difficult i mean to be out there i mean you're 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 in the middle of it i mean you're 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 still there you know what i mean how is it now compared to when you arrived well you're so right and actually over the past few years i have been exploring other cities because I'm a dual Canadian American citizen. Mm, okay. I spent a lot of time shooting in Canada in Vancouver. And so during the pandemic, I made the big move from LA to Vancouver and then now go between Vancouver and New York mainly. But I still do spend time in LA and I've been there a little bit in the past few months. And when I first moved to LA, I thought it was so exciting, but it was kind of daunting because I was. 14, I was just starting high school. I had finally made friends in middle school because I was always dancing after school, so I didn't have much time to hang out with people. And so I had this good group of friends that was go all going into the same high school. And so I was really battling with, do I give up this friend group that I finally have and the high school experience? And do I go to LA and homeschool? But I always 
I kind of knew. I just knew it was what I wanted to do. And even though LA was super, super daunting, I had a great time. My mom yeah. and I had the, had a blast there. And it is very, everybody there is an entertainment, I feel like. Right, right. I mean, it is the entertainment capital in my, in my mind, yeah. at least. It definitely is. I mean, it still is. I know people want to say other places there are there are things happening a lot in a lot of different places now but it's like here in nashville you know everyone is in the music business yeah. everyone has a music friend everyone writes everyone plays guitar everybody plays guitar really well by the way which is yeah it's yeah. crazy you know um but yeah i could imagine that must have been daunting those first couple of uh, months there yeah and i knew nobody i not, uh, a, wow. not a single soul and <laughs> So I just took a bunch of classes, as many classes as I could. And my parents were so supportive. That, and uh, that's what I was going to say, because you had to have a supportive family to, to oh, actually yeah. go through that. Right. Are, with, that. Are, were they in the business at all or they did, were? No, no, not at all. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And so my dad's a neurologist. And so not even not even in the same sphere. But mm -hmm. my brother did dabble. He's a really good uh, guitar player. He plays mm -hmm. electric. And so he had a lot of like artistic passions that kind of inspired me growing up. So mm. I kind of, he paved the way a little bit and then went the academic route. But then I just knew I wanted to stay with, with the arts and just everything about LA was crazy because we got in, <laughs> we must've gotten in three car accidents, none of which are fault in the first month of living there. Wow. It, was, oh my it was just insane because <laughs> It's, uh, someone pulled out into us in a parking lot once mm -hmm. and then we were driving a rental and then someone re-rented us on the 405 <laughs> and God. so in stopping <laughs> traffic and so it was just really hectic it's such hectic energy there it's the only way i can put it it is um, but in a great way i mean i go back yeah. now and it's nostalgic having not been there in a, like living there truly yeah. in a couple years and i have a great time but i definitely i'm loving being able to bop back and forth between Vancouver, New York, and LA. That makes, yeah, that makes so much sense. I mean, I, the, the time that I spent in LA, it, it is a fun place to go to and have some fun. And then you got to leave because yeah. it yep. gets to, uh, it gets so hectic and the traffic is, I mean, everybody talks about the traffic and that's a cliche thing, but it really does affect you emotionally, especially if you're a performer and you're trying to get, to an audition like in new york when i was going to auditions i had my metro card you yeah. know i had three or four auditions set up they were 20 blocks apart i make all of them yeah because my metro car goes zoop 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 i'm on the subway i'm, I'm there and it's it's easy you know mm -hmm. um in la the stress level of having to drive to one to, i can't even imagine and oh then my gosh, the, yeah. the 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 fear of getting rear-ended and you know constantly is also like <laughs> not not fun either that was a crazy coincidence to get in that many ice and so in the first little bit of living there it kind of just you know we were like okay we need to calm down and, and <laughs> yeah you know you think about what, it what this place is about but yeah it, i'm just yeah. getting hang, i'm getting the hang of the new york subway system now okay uh, it's that's that was daunting at first too that was yeah crazy. um but yeah la sometimes driving an hour and a half to santa monica to go to a five minute audition. Right. <laughs> it was, it's just every cliche about being an actor. You're right. <laughs> You're like, You're okay, right. well, I guess I'm leaving all the way back to the valley now. Yeah, it's like three hours and the, and then the five minutes that you spent acting. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you ever have thoughts like you know when you're going through all that? Did you ever have thoughts of was this a mistake? Do we, did we did or or did you just like no 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 I have to keep going keep going you know that type of thing. Yeah, I don't think I had a thought once that wow. said this is a yeah. this is a mistake because that's awesome. Yeah, I was just so determined. Good for you. Yeah, I good. I was definitely just so determined, and I was used to taking a lot of rejection okay. as a dancer. My studio, my first studio, was like Dance Moms. It was actually <laughs> just like Dance Moms. Wow. Um, it's not that much of an exaggeration that show, and. <laughs> So I was used to 
parents being like, she can't be in that class. She didn't like earn her way in that class and then be bumping me down. Oh, God. So, and then going to competitions and then almost getting that top spot. So you, you <laughs> get that taste of rejection, which was almost a good thing. So right. it just made me work that much harder. So I, I don't think I ever thought this is a mistake. I just thought, okay, next one, when's the next call coming in? When's yeah, the next audition yeah. coming in? Especially as a 14, 15 year old. You know, ready. Wow. And another thing that you mentioned, I just want to kind of mention really quick is that you, there was some times where you had to make the decision where you said, okay, do I stay here and hang out, you know, and just stay with my friends or do I actually make this move? And it's, it's something I actually just simple things like that. I even go through, I have a 15 year old daughter right now, right? And mm -hmm. she's, she, she does a lot of things. She plays sports. She play, you know, she sings, she does a lot of different things. And I talked to her about when I was younger, when I was playing, learning the drums and getting into music, I could have been playing out there with my friends, but I was playing eight hours on those drums because I was so obsessed with getting good mm -hmm. and, and I could see the vision in the future of, well, I could see myself playing on stage and playing with this person and playing with that person. And I could see that you had that vision, which is something that I try to impart onto her because, and not, and not that I force her to do anything, but I say, listen, if you want to get good at this, you may have to sacrifice time of hanging out because you really want this. And right. that's one of those things, right? That that you went through. Yeah, that up. that's a difficult thing to to just be born with, you right? Know, especially when you have a good supportive family, it's really great, you know. To they nurture that, um, but you have to miss the party if you want to actually achieve greatness and if you want to be good at something. You have to miss the party because I guarantee you, there's always someone's birthday is coming up. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you have a ton of friends, they're going to invite you to a gazillion parties. Yes. And if you say yes to half of them, the other half are going to be insulted. So say no to everyone. It's not, that's Why I have no story. friends. The moral of the story is have zero fun. Right. Just wake up, grind, go to bed, grind. Um, no, but <laughs> it's hard. It's hard even now. I find yeah. it's yeah. hard to find a balance sometimes because yeah. I didn't. I didn't know any different when mm -hmm. I was right. that age because I was just having so much fun dancing and right. all the other girl dancers were, and and boy dancers, but our studio is primarily girls, um, were there six hours a day after school every day. And we all got a waiver that said we didn't have to do school sports because we were dancing every day for six hours and on weekends. Oh, so we would get home and do our homework at like 11 p.m. and midnight. And so I just didn't know any different because that's what we were all doing at my mm -hmm. dance studio and when we were hanging out it was at competitions and so that was yeah. kind of a it got me in the mentality right. which can be i mean there has to be a balance right yeah sure. well yeah i was gonna say that you have to love it because yeah. you know what i mean you have to love it that's the that's the main the main point of everything because you can't really uh you can't enforce creativity to on someone yeah. that just doesn't want to be creative, right. you know, you know what I mean? And so you, yeah, you definitely uh, need to actually love it so much that you want to skip that party and say, listen, I'd love to go, but I got to learn this monologue. You yeah. know, I have an audition coming up. Listen, I love you. You're the best in the world, but I really got to go figure out this thing that I got to go, you know, maybe next week we'll meet for coffee and we'll do something. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you have to be balanced, but it also has to be communicated. So you, you end up with friends. Like I, I'm in Nashville. I have a wife and two kids. They're my only friends. George talks to me every once in a while. Once in a while. <laughs> At least once a week. Um, and, and that's it, you know, but it is that type of commitment that you have to, that you have to have. I want to, um, I'm sorry, we you going to say something? Well, I'm sure you guys find that even with doing this podcast and do, doing this is like pretty much a full-time job yes. on yes. top of doing <laughs> yes. so many other things and having so many other <laughs> creative endeavors. Right. You guys choose to spend your time making this podcast mm -hmm. and it's a lot, it's a lot of work. A lot of my friends say, I'm going to start a podcast and I'm like, Good luck with that. Right. Because that is yeah. really hard. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Especially if you want to expand it. Yeah. You know, George and I started this with the with just a nothing major, you know, but then we started getting guests that were like, oh, okay. 
yeah. and then it started kind of snowballing into something that that we're really excited about. But yeah, we this is the live show that we do on Tuesdays. We're this week we're doing two other shows, recorded ones, um, that will air later. So we're constantly, you know, booking and, and shooting shows and stuff. So yeah, you're right. And it is something also that the reward comes from this here. Mm -hmm. This is like George and I this, talking to you. This is our reward. This is why we do it because we're we're passionate about what we do. And then when we're talking to someone who's equally as passionate and doing it and out there, that to us is like, that's the, you know, that's the gold, you know, for us. So, um, and I have nowhere to go other than that, but. <laughs> well, I know you have a gold. point in there somewhere. <laughs> we uh, it was gold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and one of the, uh, the things that George and I talk about also is that we want to make sure that the guests uh, feel like we're with them on the journey, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we're all we're all on this journey. We're not, you know what I mean? It's it's a it's a path that, and it doesn't matter where what direction we're going in or what our interests are or our different you know uh, forms of creativity. It's still a journey that we're all on. And so when we're on here, whether it's a writer, we've had medical people on, we've had you know rock and roll hall of fame people on, yes. we've had like people that are just on this path some of them are far ahead some of them are starting out some of them are in the middle some of them are where you know and that joy for us is like this is what the show is about this is what being yeah. an artist is about you yeah know? yeah it's so true are, are you right you're right now in um in new york or you're in, in i'm in vancouver right now vancouver okay yesterday okay cool so let's talk about some some actual stuff first of all i have to say this because my daughter will get mad she's 11 years old and um a mermaid's tail Oh my God. <laughs> was like her thing. She, everything was mermaid. Mm. So she wanted to be here because she wanted to jump on, but I, she, her mother took her to the pool and, and my son to the pool. So they're there, but she wanted me to ask a question. Okay. <laughs> Yay. You, have ask her this. you have to ask her this. Was the tail really heavy? <laughs> this is what hey, she asked me. That's a good question. Because <laughs> I, I've been waiting for this one because, uh -huh. yes, <laughs> yes, really? it was really heavy and it <laughs> filled up with water. And so oh. there were little like holes at the bottom that the water went out of, but there was oh. water all in there. Oh. So by the end of the shoot, I had really nailed it. You know, last couple of days we were in the ocean and I had to do the big dive where the tail flips up, you know, yeah. and I go down into the ocean. And had finally nailed it but it takes all your strength to go down and get that tail to flip up behind you yeah. and so yeah it was really heavy i think that the tail was i mean eight pounds just as is but oh, then wow. when it filled up with water it felt like 20. wow so wow. that's that's heavy especially when it's not you know we're not mermaids you know yeah you know. i know <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely, yeah. definitely not you were a mermaid it wouldn't you wouldn't feel it but <laughs> wow, that is uh, really something. So anyway, my daughter's, daughter's name is Brianna. So Brianna, there you go. Hi, Brianna. All right. Yeah. Thanks for the question. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, George, do you have any questions? Because I feel like I'm... Yeah, well, thank you for letting me chime in, sir. Um, more. <laughs> so tell me about um, when you first got your, like, your big, your biggest gig. Okay. When you first, you know, when you first, how, you know, how did it happen and how did you feel when you were like, okay, I'm here. I made it here. This is it. Yeah. Okay. I feel the need to preface this with a story about getting my biggest gig and then losing it. So oh. when yeah. I was 14 in LA, I had been auditioning for this show and it was a hub network, which is, I don't think hub is longer, no longer a, a network, mm -hmm. but I had known about it and I had been telling my agent for months, I hear this is going to be a thing. I really want to audition for it. I know another person on this network. I really want to do it. And finally I get the audition. I nail it. I go to the testing session with, I'm the only girl there. There are four or five guys. And so I'm feeling pretty good that this role is, is mine. And my best friend is in the waiting room. And I say, you know, my best friend is in the waiting room and he comes in and he tests the role with me and then they send everybody home. And so at this point I'm feeling really great. And then I book the role. And then that was my biggest gig. And it was a youth television show called Spooksville. And then after 
that I'm waiting to hear some news and a few months go by. Oh, it's getting pushed. Production's just getting pushed. You know, they need to find a new location or something. I'm like, oh yeah, that's fine. Take your time. I am here and waiting. Right. And then eight months go by. I packed up my apartment in LA. I've gone back to Arizona. I'm getting ready to move up to Canada where the show is going to be shooting. And then eight months later, my best friend, who was going to be the lead, I was going to be the number four in it. Um, and so that wasn't the lead, one of the lead guys or girls, but she was pretty much, she was one of the series regulars. Mm -hmm. And then I get the call that he's going up to Canada to test with other actresses. And so I am devastated. Oh. I packed up my apartment. I like changed my whole life for this role that I was so excited for. And it came down to they needed a Canadian citizen with BC who paid BC taxes oh. for the tax credits. Okay. And I had my Canadian citizenship, but I didn't have my Canadian passport and I definitely didn't have my BC residency. Okay. So from that point on, I said, okay, I'm going to get my Canadian passport and I'm going to book another show in Canada. I made it my life's goal to book another show within, I just worked so hard. I remember that six months after finding out that I wasn't going to be on that show, making it my life's mission to get another show, which I mean, it's not, you can't really manifest that stuff, mm, but I right. just made it my life's mission. And then I got an audition for the show called Some Assembly Required. And they were looking for Canadian citizens. They didn't need BC residents, but they were looking for citizens um, living in LA and Canadian citizens all across. They did a nationwide search across Canada. Mm. And I remember seeing this and going, this is perfect. This is what I've trained for. There was a dumb blonde role and a edgy punk rock chick. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go in for this edgy punk rock chick because that's the one I got the audition for and went in with my Avril Lavigne, like blue extensions and bracelets all at my wrist. And I did the first audition. It went really well. They called me back for the dumb blonde role and the punk rock chick, which, I mean, these are just stereotypes, you know, yeah. <laughs> stereotyping these characters, but that's what, what it was. That's right. what um, yeah. <laughs> Um, it's a kid's show. And so I went back in and did the audition in front of the showrunners and was just, you know, oh, just hoping, crossing my fingers, toes, and my hair was braided for this role. And then I got the call that I got to test with other actors in Vancouver. So they flew us up, put us up, and we tested. We were there all day. And there was another girl there for my role, and she was from the Nationwide Search. And mm. so there was two of each character there. Oh, and man. then I found out a couple weeks later that I had booked it. And that was just the best feeling. So I went up, visited the set of the show that got, had gotten taken away from me. And <laughs> went on set to say, hey, look who's my best friend. <laughs> wow. I'm right here just so you guys know if you need me. I mean, I'm there's watching. no hard feelings. This was no, ages ago, and like I, and it ended up working out fine. But yeah, I was like, I went on set, and it was like, I was also just so it was so weird to see how different the shows were. But then I filmed the show, and then it ended up going for three seasons, which was awesome. Yeah, wow, that is, that is so great. It um, was it was the best, and just filming in Canada too, getting to grow up and spend. I booked him when I was 15 and then we wrapped when I was 18 and just getting to spend those years in Vancouver and yeah. finish out school up there was awesome. Those are like really uh, big years because you're kind of going from sort of like a teenage, the older teenage to 18 where you can vote, I guess. I don't know how it is up there in Canada, but um, yeah, that's, that's a, that's an amazing, amazing story. But, you know, you, you mentioned something about manifesting and I, and I'm always fascinating about that, you know, fascinating fascinated about it because I do think that there are abilities that we have as creative individuals that we can actually extend ourselves to really get what we want and mm -hmm. it's not it's not like this thing that's like I gotta get this thing you know what I mean but it's like I really want to do this I love to do this and I'm gonna keep going because I know I'm gonna get this you know what yeah. I mean that's that's a, a pleasant way of manifesting rather than you know there's a lot of people <laughs> there's a lot of people that I'll meet that are like, they feel they deserve it. 
Mm-hmm. They're entitled to it right. in some way because they've put in all the years and they put in all this. And that doesn't necessarily ever, you know, mean anything, you know, unfortunately. Right. Um, but what was your thought process and your, you know, after you booked it and you started working on it, you know, did you kind of go back and say, wow, I did, I was there and I did this and then here I am and you're on set and you got the cameras, lights, action. But was it, did you really reflect on that? I wouldn't say I was reflecting on it, but I would say that there was, I was very self-aware in filming that show and Mm. I have zero regrets. You know how sometimes people are like, I wish I would have enjoyed it more or I I would have realized what I had. Every moment that I was on that set, I just kept reminding myself how grateful I was. Mm -hmm. And I really was truly working the hardest I could work at every moment on that show. It was my first big opportunity. And I was just so excited to be there at any given moment. So it really was like one of those moments where I was just soaking it all up I I really I really was and so sometimes I'll look back on on jobs and say okay I could have enjoyed that more I could have done this differently or this but with that one I just there's nothing that it was just meant to be and it was just smooth sailing that's awesome yeah and I just loved it all yeah but I I think also you know like again going back to the story of when you first got to LA and the accidents and all the stuff you were going through there it does make you kind of appreciate it more yeah. And say, you know, I, I, I went through all that, but right. here I am and I got it. And, you yeah. know, now things are, you know, kicking on all cylinders. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I think did, losing that job right before did. Make right. Me, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 like you said, it, made, it makes you appreciate it more. Yes. Yeah. The harder you work, the more you, you appreciate it. And, and the more yeah. lucky you get too. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like what I've said here before on the show, like sometimes you'll look back and you're like, while you're in it, you're like, oh, my God, this is so, this sucks. And, blah, 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 you know, and you're going through all this stuff and it's just challenge, challenge. But then when you look back on it, it's this beautifully crafted novel of mm-hmm. a journey that you're on. And it's like, wow, this is, a, this is that was beautiful. You know, yeah. at the time it was that. But looking back on it, it was like it made me what I am right now. And it made me able to to move forward. Right. Yeah, it's true. And, and, and there aren't days like there are always going to be days where we're complaining about something or we're sure. having mm-hmm. a hard time with something, but that doesn't have to be what we focus on. Right. Right. Exactly. right. exactly. Afterward, we can look back and still say, okay, even though that was really freaking hard and kind of had some bad times within that. And sometimes jobs are like that or, or things we have to go through. We can look back and still say, Oh, but I'm grateful for that. And all in all, it was a pretty good experience. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, Excuse me, I said skim milk. This is half and half. <laughs> okay. Talk to, talk to me, though, when you go to a place with, with uh, no almond milk. <laughs> oh. oh, no, I can't go there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Horror. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, exactly. In my house, it would be the horror, yes. <laughs> yeah, I love that stuff. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Pillow Talk, and then we're going to get into some music. Um, I saw... Um, um an episode uh, very funny and i and i know that um i saw an interview actually that you were on where you were talking about the the show and you were there with your co-star yes. um how because i i think about that that concept and it seems like how could I mean, it has to be good writing that's number one you know and it has mm-hmm. to be it has to be humorous it has to be funny mm-hmm. um and it looks like you had those elements there you have to have good performances you definitely had that how was that experience for you? Um, and and how did you even how did you get that role? That was um, kind of crazy. I had been really wanting to do another comedy, mm-hmm. and this audition came along, and it was like a perfect storm. It just kind of all worked out. We had decided let's audition together, and when I got the audition, I got the they were looking for partners to audition and I had gotten it as an individual because they released it to individuals. And so I was looking at this and thinking, oh, maybe we should just audition together. We did. And we ended up booking it and we got all of our scripts in advance. And 
oh, wow. we're block shooting. And so mm -hmm. basically that means that we're shooting all of our scenes in a row instead of shooting in order of the episodes. So all no other actors were there. It was just myself and my co-star. Right. And we got about 80 pages memorized before we even arrived. So we memorized oh, it wow. the play. And then we got there and had to do scene after scene after scene after scene. No break, just lunch break, yeah. but on set all day, filming all day, memorizing pretty wordy scenes. So yeah. that was a that was a new one for me. Definitely a new type of shooting. But I look at that project and I really like how it turned out. And yeah. I'm really excited to shoot season two because I've read a couple of the scenes from season two and they're so funny. Oh, cool. I'm good. I may be a little yeah. bit biased, but I think they're <laughs> I think they're so funny. Um, and it is translated from their French series Entre du Dra. Right. Uh, not pronouncing that right but <laughs> it's translated from that and so it, that series has already done really well yeah among the french-speaking community and so to get to do that was really fun and to get to do those roles for an english audience was was a blast yeah and it's almost like i mean it, it not almost it kind of it is theater you know because it, it you're confined in a, on, a, on a theater on a stage you're confined yeah. to that space so you kind of have I mean, yeah, you can move cameras around around the room, but um, that experience must have been really interesting with your co-star also having a relationship. You know, I was going to ask you about that. Like, how did yeah. that, uh, you know, you both got the gig and how was that, uh, how did that pan out? You know, it was actually great because who mm -hmm. are you more comfortable with? Right. Yeah, it's true. Right. You're a partner, right? right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So... Yeah. My wife will kill me, but <laughs> our, pillow talk, our pillow talk would be like, uh, did you take the kitchen, the, the chicken out of the oven? <laughs> yeah. Don't take forget that she's got horseback riding on the weekend. <laughs> I'm not going to forget. You know, sometimes the scenes are like that. They're just yeah. simple everyday things. Like you forgot to do the laundry today. Right. Mm -hmm. Said you were going to do it. Right. Um, well, the birth control one was like hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> we had we had a blast, you know, and I thought it was just so perfect because we didn't need a lot of sets now have intimacy coordination, mm -hmm. which there's someone on set making sure that everybody feels comfortable and that the right. scenes are which is a great thing and that the scenes are choreographed so that people are comfortable, but we didn't need that because we were already in a relationship. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, and okay. so Th One that job. Was, it was it was really a a great thing, and I do think it was such an interesting concept for the showrunners to yeah move forward because I think everybody on in season one would, they were real life couples, but then there was a pair of roommates. Right. Yeah. Well, there's there's an interesting dynamic to a relationship that people don't see, and I think that you know a lot of shows they try to capture the overall essence of a big giant you know, a big thing happening, right? But there's these little tiny moments. Like I, I wrote a thing um, a while back that I shot and it was because my 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 uh, my shoelaces broke. So my wife gave me a pair of shoelaces that she had, you know, it was brand new. So I took them, I put them in my shoe. Like a week goes by and she's like, did you get new shoelaces? I'm like, no, I got the shoelaces you gave me. No, but those are mine. I'm like, what do you mean? You gave me shoelaces for my shoes. I'm supposed to not go buy shoelaces? So we had this whole kind of this whole thing. Now, of course, <laughs> at the time, I'm really upset that she wants to take my my damn shoelaces. Um, <laughs> that, you know, she wasn't using anyway. But I'm, you know, there's little moments like that that you can really find humor in because at the time yeah. it was an actual thing. But people don't see that in relationships, you know. They're, you know, or at least the outside, you know, it's mm -hmm. always like this major major thing. This pillow talk is really exactly what that is. It's pillow talk. It's that conversation that, you know, the fly on the wall kind of thing, you right. know, which really makes it interesting. Um, and the writing, you could really have so much fun with the writing. I can't wait to see season two. Yeah, it, it's true because it, with the shoelacing, you know, anything can be big in the moment. Right. right. <laughs> and that's what, a lot of our, that's what a lot of our scenes are. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> wow, well, I think that's a good problem to have. <laughs> right. Over, oh, shoelaces. Shoelaces. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep them at the divorce, though. I'm going <laughs> to um, That's awesome. That's awesome. So September uh, 2022, you start shooting. I know. Um, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, that's going to be so awesome. I want to, we're already at 44 minutes, 45 minutes. Wow. It's like, whoosh. Wow, that um, flew by. I know. I want to talk about your music because I was like, yes. whoa. And I heard ETA and, uh, I, you know, I heard uh, um, a lot of the stuff on your YouTube channel. And my daughter actually knows ETA, by the way. She, I had it on. She was like, oh, I know that song. Oh, I, oh, I like, wish she was here. I wish your daughter I know, was here. I know. And, and I was like, you know, they had this thing where they were going to go, but uh, she'll definitely uh, watch it. John, sometimes um, you have to miss the pool to come and learn stuff. You know, you know what it, you know what it saying, was? I'm just saying. <laughs> you know what it was? And, and, I, and I, when he gets all, I, I love you, Ben, my son, Ben. But it was really Ben. Ben had to go to oh, the pool. Sure, blame it on me. And it was, if he didn't go to the pool, he's going to, he's five and a half years old. So he, uh, he'd freak out. So, you know, so I blame him, even though I, I love you, Ben. But wow, yeah. amazing callback. Right. That's incredible. <laughs> 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 so let's talk about your music um obviously you you were in the dance so music is a big part of already it's already innate in you when did you kind of say okay i'm gonna i'm gonna belt out a tune <laughs> <laughs> uh, well i started playing guitar when i was about 14. okay oh nice i was put in lessons and loved that and would sing and play with my guitar and strum four chords and, and get by. And then I started really taking it seriously around 17. That's when I started taking vocal lessons because I wasn't trained at all and didn't, didn't really have any sort of direction there and had kind of an indie thing going on. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I started writing my own music when I was 19. So music came later, but I mm -hmm. am loving it. Yeah. Well, you're, you're natural too. Like, you know, um, there's a, a naturalness when you're performing. And I think it comes from the fact that you're a dancer and you're an actress. So all that stuff just kind of uh, comes together. Again, going back to what we started talking about in the beginning, it's why in the 40s and the 50s, the studios had, had the actors do that, you know, right. get that training because you can be more of uh, more free to actually communicate in different areas, you know. So that was very, very well done. Um, are you planning uh, like shows? Well, I and really want to. Yeah, that'd I, be awesome. I, I really want to. That's kind of my next goal is to do some shows with my original music. I haven't done one with original music. Mm -hmm. And I would love to also find an acting role that has music in it somehow. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. But I need to put a band together and do it. What are you guys doing? In Go for months. it. Hey, let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it. You guys want to come to Vancouver and do a show? Yeah, let's do it. I'll, let's I'll, do it. I'll, I'll, I got my passport. I think they'll allow me in there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm in Nashville right now, so here I could throw this pencil and hit a band. You know, yeah. The yeah. whole band in one hit. <laughs> you know? yeah. um, so there's a lot of that here uh, for sure. Um, it's also a wonderful time to be in music and just to be in art in general because the internet and social media and all that gives – if you use it correctly and you use it properly and you use it with the intention of really communicating positive music and getting your art out there, it really is an amazing time to, to have it. Cause like you were saying, looking for a band, I mean, I'm pretty sure, I mean, we would love to go up to Vancouver, but I'm pretty sure that right in your area with an, with some uh, um, ad or something or whatever you, you would use, you can get a band for a rehearsal, get in, find out audition guys, you know what I mean? And put that together. That'd be awesome. That'd be so fantastic. You in Nashville, lot. you perform here. You know, it's an area that I don't have a lot of expertise in is music and booking and venues and things like that. So, you know, it's it's a challenge that I'm up, up for and it's mm -hmm. something I'd be excited to do. It just probably take a lot of planning, right. careful planning, attention, right. especially depending on the venue and what you know, sound checks and things like that. I, I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to that stuff too, especially yeah. performing my music. Nice. Nice. Um, but it would be great. Yeah, it's definitely a goal within the next, it was my goal, my 2022 goal was to perform yeah. 
even a small show with originals. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we I have a lot of uh, experience in that area it's, it's with bookings, especially here in Nashville. I've been here for only a year, but I've met so many people here in that area, uh, musicians and and just we had on uh, Jessica Lynn a, a couple of was that last week or a couple of weeks ago? A couple of weeks ago, yeah. Um, and she was great. You know, she's got a band, and she's touring, and it's just it was great. So there's a lot of information there, and we'd love to help you any way we possibly can out of Nashville. That'd be great. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Um, and George, um, I don't think he's going to be touring with Plum Dolls until <laughs> next yeah, no. year, yeah. right? You guys are. We're, we're working, working on, on our album. next record right the now. Next That's what we're working on now, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> got to dust off those tights. Um, <laughs> so I want to kind of. Um, <laughs> We're already at, at almost an hour. I want to kind of ask you a couple of questions that we always ask our guests. And it's really for our audience, really, you know, that that we do this. Um, there are a lot of artists that are out there right now that um, the pandemic really put a damper on their plans. Mm -hmm. You had either two choices, right? You can succumb or you can rise above it and just keep going and try to do something, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um and the trying to do something about it, sometimes it's difficult to get to. And we find that talking to artists like yourself, we get that motivation, we get that inspiration, yes. you know, and we understand that there are other others out there kind of getting it and doing it. If someone was out there right now, they're kind of watching the show, they're maybe they've been planning on getting that, finishing up that script or starting or starting to audition again. I got actor friends in New York that haven't auditioned anymore because they're yeah. they don't want to go out i'm like dude right. you gotta get your ass out there i'm like what are you <laughs> doing you know yeah. um yeah. and it's really really sad you know what piece of advice would you give to someone out there i think making your own opportunities sometimes is key and right now there are so many chances to do that with the pandemic there came a lot of online opportunities mm -hmm. And there are ways to create your own film professionally or not professionally and put it in online festivals and put your screenplay in writing competitions. And I've found that if meeting one new person can make all the difference. So really putting yourself out there to make those connections and talking with other creatives can just be inspiring as well. But I, yeah, I would say making your own opportunities, whether that's writing your own project, making your short film, writing a song, just one thing a day. I try to do one thing a day, whether yeah. it's writing something or submitting something, anything. Yeah. To just make some progress, it feels great. Yeah, and I love that. The one thing a day, I talk about that a lot. Um, you know, if you move the needle forward just that much, every yeah. single yeah. day, you're going in the right direction. Yeah, because it sounds cliche, but it really is just about the journey. It's really right if you're having fun along the way and uh, having a great time, people are going to see that. People are going to resonate with that, and that's right. all that really matters. Yeah, right. but it does sound so cliche because everybody yeah. wants to make the next big thing and make the next big project. But if you're doing something and pushing it forward, that's impressive and enjoy it. Yeah, enjoy yeah, it because it is really hard time. work. So. Pat yourself on the back sometimes. Yeah, yeah. During the pandemic, I uh, finished editing. Uh, I'm not an editor, but I took like, online courses <laughs> to learn how to edit during the pandemic. I learned how to edit. I edited my film. I made the music, um, put it together, sent it out. And this year, it's been in four fest film festivals uh, so far. And I submitted to I submitted to five, and it got into four. So I was pretty happy. Wow, congrats. Yeah, so thank you. And so what you said, the first thing you said, make your own way, yeah. make it. your opportunities. That was like the key thing for me. Um, so thank you so much for that. Appreciate it. So, wow, <laughs> you could probably uh, go on and on uh, because you have uh, a wonderful energy. You have wonderful uh, creative um, ideas and spirit you know and that's something that always comes through when whenever we do these shows we always just feel that energy even though we're so far apart mm -hmm. again making opportunities right that's why yes. we're here we're doing this uh this show and 
to, to be able to share those, uh, those moments. So we really appreciate you taking the time to be here. Um, this is your website. It's on the screen there. Um, everyone, everything's going to be on the description below. I go like this, like it's, I don't know, I don't know, but it's somewhere, <laughs> somewhere below there. Thing, it's going to be <laughs> there, right there. It's, it's there. And, um, and please make sure you follow her on social media. She's on Instagram. I think I just started following you, uh, on Instagram as well. And we're going to keep an eye on you. We're going to support you and anything that you need from George and John from counterparts, please let us know. We are here to help you any way that we possibly can. And I could play the tambourine. Um, <laughs> but if you need a tambourine player, I'll, I'll do it. I don't got to play guitar. I play them. You need a tambourine player. Yeah. yeah. George does a mean triangle. So <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for having yeah. me. And no, thank you everybody blast. who watched. Absolutely. Yeah, this, is, this is great. It was thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful uh, evening. And we'll talk to you soon. Actually, hang out for one second and we'll be right back. Yes. Wow. Wow. You see? There this it is. is. What, uh, this is what. This is why we do this. Say. This is why we do this. It's because yes. it's you get energetic. Like right now, I just feel like I want to go dancing. I'm not gonna do that because my back, but <laughs> I wanna, I wanna kind of just try it. But anyway, I want to grab a triangle, just so you know. Yeah, there you go. Triangle. <laughs> I get my tambourine. We're ready to go up to Canada. Um, all right, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate all of you. Uh, please uh, check us out next. Tuesday, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we have a lot of surprises and a lot of great guests coming up. So please follow us on counterpartsshow.com and get all the information. So we'll see you again. Take care for George Batista, John Henry Soto, counterparts, and everybody here. As always, peace. Peace.